Today, IBM is one of the largest companies in the world, but they have a pretty dark past. In this video, we will go through how the Nazi regime ended up using IBM technology and how one of America's largest corporations, like so many times before, chose profit over morality to aid Hitler in one of the largest genocide in human history. Every 10 years, the US Census Bureau had to count the US population. But since all of this had to be done by hand, it took over seven years to finish. This sparked an idea for Hermann Hollerith, a young employee at the Bureau. He spent 10 years developing a system that could make the process a lot easier and the result was the tabulator. The tabulator was the first ever electrical counting machine. It would use punching cards to store information and it made the process a lot easier and faster. Herman started a company called Tabulating Machine Company in 1896. In 1910, Willy Heidenberg, an acquaintance of Herman Hollerith, licensed the tabulator to sell in Germany and started the company Dihomag, or translated to English, German Hollerith Machines LLC. A year after, Herman sold his company, the Tabulating Machine Company, to Charles Flint for over a million dollars. With the purchase, Charles created the company Computing Tabulating Recording Company, or CTR, as a result of three acquisitions. Charles put in charge Thomas J. Watson to head the new operation, and in 1923, Dihomag became a direct subsidiary and the company was renamed IBM. Dihomag became the main provider for computing expertise for growing Nazi Germany to keep track on their population. In 1933, they had data over most of Nazi Germany's population with race data, family history, occupation, bank statements, and sexual orientation. With this data, the Nazi regime was able to quickly and systematically accelerate Hitler's anti-Jewish program. At the beginning, the punch cards, machinery, training, servicing, and special project works such as population census and identification was managed directly by IBM headquarters in New York. But with the increasing need of tabulators, Thomas J. Watson traveled to Germany and invested $1 million into Diomax to expand their operation and increase their partnership with the Nazi regime. With this, they were able to reproduce the increasing demands of tabulators in Germany and help Hitler in his expansion. With the construction of the Holocaust camps, the tabulator was an important piece. IBM maintained a customer site known as the Hollerith department in virtually every concentration camp to sort or process punch cards and track prisoners. The codes show IBM's numerical designation for various camps. Auschwitz was 001, Buschenwald was 002, Dachau was 003, and so on. Various prisoner types were reduced to EBM numbers, with 3 signifying homosexual, 9 for antisocial, and 12 for gypsy. The EBM number 8 designated a Jew. Inmate death was also reduced to an EBM digit. 3 represented death by natural causes, 4 by execution, 5 by suicide, and code 6 designated special treatment in gas chambers. IBM engineers had to create tolerate codes to differentiate between a Jew who had been worked to death and one who had been gassed, then print the cards, configure the machines, train the staff, and continuously maintain the fragile systems every two weeks on site in the concentration camps. The business was doing so well that during the 1930s, Diomag was IBM's second most profitable company. And with the success, Hitler gave Watson a special award to honor the extraordinary service by a foreigner to the Third Reich. After a lot of public outrage with the bombing in Paris, Watson would later in June of 1940 return the medal. IBM claim it does not have any other information about the company during its World War II period or the operations of Dehomag, 
as it argued most documents were destroyed or lost during the war. But it's safe to say that EBN's tabulator was used extensively during the World War II and the money that the company made during this time helped them grow substantially. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to get more information about this, I strongly advise you to read EBM and the Holocaust by Edwin Black. If you want to see more of the same material, please hit that subscribe button. I will have more videos like this coming out soon.